As much as I feel like we owe a debt of gratitude towards the founding pillars of Doctor Who, such as Verity Lambert, Sidney Newman, and even William Hartnell himself, I feel like without Patrick Troughton, the show may have not had the legacy it has now. It begs the question, if Patrick Troughton did not play the second incarnation of Doctor Who, would we still be celebrating it in its 60th year? Let's discuss. <laughs> So, <laughs> this is more than just, would the show have continued without him? Um, this is more so about, would the character have been any different? Would the show have still been very popular all these years later? But still, would it be on? And I feel like, if we ask the question, would the show either mechanically different, or just require Patrick Troughton's existence to, like, continue doing what Doctor Who does? No, I don't think that is the right question to ask, considering William Hartnell did it. So I don't see why Patrick Troughton was necessary to continue the weekly format, I guess. I think it's interesting to note that there was a shift during the Troughton era of focusing less so on educating people about history and more just focusing on the monsters aspect. I don't think that was a Patrick Trout thing though, I think that was a producer sort of thing, and it's Lloyd and all that. The real thing that should be discussed is what Patrick Trout actually brought to the show, and if, say, they decided to cast someone else instead, would what Patrick Trout have brought have been integral to what we know the show to be. The show's identity, if you will. The character's identity as well. I mean, if we look at what he didn't bring to the table, he nearly played the Doctor as an Arabian Knight, all blacked up and that, and the show would have aged poorly. The, the reputation of the show in hindsight would have been a lot worse than it is now. Because Doctor Who's no stranger to the practice. Uh, well, it certainly wasn't back in the day. But when the lead character is an example of that, that would be pretty bad. I've got a list of the um, things that Patrick Troughton was also considering alongside uh, racism. And I've, I've basically truncated it. Um, he could have been a sea captain, a pirate, a Tory, a Sherlock Holmes type character, and a mad scientist too. But it works! It works! It works! That's all that really matters! Yahoo! So, say he wasn't the Cosmic Kobo that he ended up being, that Ennis Lloyd liked so much. How would the show have changed? In terms of the show's longevity, probably not that much. The show was experiencing a decline in viewing figures anyway, and quite frankly, for the overall longevity of the show, having the main character change actors combined with the success of the Pertwee years, I think is what actually has caused us to enjoy the show today. One may argue the second Doctor wasn't actually very captivating to a 60s audience, although I still think he was to an extent considering the show wasn't exactly failing, but it may not have been the success that the producers would have wanted, and it was possible that it would have been cancelled in season 7 if that season wasn't as successful as it was. If you want to know more about what caused the decline in viewing figures, I recommend checking out Adam Martin's videos on the viewing figures of Doctor Who, specifically in the Troughton years, um, But if you want to learn more about stuff relevant to this video. But it's a great series anyway, so I just recommend it in general. Another thing to note about characterization, we can actually look to the biography of Patrick Troughton, written by his son, Michael. He knew he couldn't replace Billy Harnell. Like, he, he knew. He, he couldn't. He recognised that would have diminished the appeal of the show pretty quickly, considering people would be tuning in for Bill Hartnell, not someone trying to be Bill Hartnell. He actually compared it to the Dalek movies starring Peter Cushing, where he was basically trying to be Hartnell. He, he wasn't very kind to them, unfortunately. 
Funnily enough, this was actually the version of the character in the original draft of The Power of the Daleks. If this continued, I agree with Pat. It would have... Seriously, like, who would want to watch someone trying to be Bill Hartnell? Like, I'm not dissing the Peter Cushing Dark movies. I don't even like Peter Cushing in them. But William Hartnell as the First Doctor is really good. And people really liked him. He was very popular for good reason. But say Matt Smith tried to be David Tennant again. I know the writing was kind of trying to gear in that direction, but that was not what Matt Smith was wanting to try to do. But if he did, that kind of would have killed the show in the 2010s. It just makes him feel like an imposter. And no, I'm not going to make an Among Us joke. But if the show somehow didn't die, let's say it did continue on through some miracle, how would that have affected the character? What it meant to be the Doctor would have probably change, let's be real. The thing is, a lot of what we know as the Doctor's overall characterization can stem back from the second Doctor, not the first Doctor. The Doctor would have more been a crotchety Victorian adventurer with a touch of humour here and there, with a paternal instinct, but he would sternly control situations and... Yeah, that is that is the First Doctor, boiled down to basic characterization without any of Bill Hartnell's flair. And that would have probably been if, well, if Pat Troughton carried that on, sure, the meat on the bones would have probably morphed into stuff that viewers of those particular times would have liked, but... You know, the Doctor, that's basically what the Doctor's characterization would, in theory, be. Otherwise, they'd be completely changing the character. So, at this early stage, what Pat Troughton brought, and maybe what the writers brought, but we'll get to that, um, all of that and making sure that he's different to Bill Hartnell, definitely, I think, made the character what he's known for today. Who knows if um, if they did go with a Bill Hartnell impersonation, it would have been still great. But we'll talk more about that later. If the BBC had their way, yes, this might have been the case, but something else that they were considering is have the Doctor be a bit humorous, but make him more of a chess master kind of deal. So we could have had the Seventh Doctor early. Now, as much as I'm a Seventh Doctor connoisseur, um, no, I don't, I don't think that would have been a good idea. I think it's too early in the show's life to try something like that. And who knows, maybe they wouldn't have gone as far as Andrew Cartmel and Sylvester McCoy did, but if they did, that would have possibly been alienating. That would have been a bit too far in the direction that Hartnell was already going. And I'm not saying Troughton didn't manipulate situations, but the way he did it was subtle unless he's planned everything out. It feels very spur of the moment. So yeah, I don't think it would have been a good idea. Especially if the BBC felt he should act as if he were on the LSD drug. Troughton himself was actually the person to come up with the final characterization, which was built on throughout his run. The Doctor is eccentric, childlike, but most importantly, he's a listener. He listens to those in need to find out how best to help. This really shows in stories like the Macro Terror, and being suspicious of ulterior motives is something that is really strongly felt in episode one of The Enemy of the World. I know these are just single instances uh, that I'm picking from from his era, because those are the ones that come to mind most for me, but... Isn't this whole listener kind of character what the Doctor is overall? Even if the show survived the uh, Patrick Troughton's tenure, if it was either not him in the helm or if he did something different, I don't know if any of the other actors would have taken initiative to innovate the character as much as... Troughton did. You know, if the basic essence of what it means to be the Doctor wasn't boiled down this early on. 
perhaps the show could have ended with Philip Hinchcliffe for being too edgy without seeing the point. And perhaps the 2005 revival wouldn't have been a success because they would have possibly changed the character too much, or have been seen to do so. All this was down to Troughton himself. Not Innes Lloyd, not Jerry Davis, not even Sidney Newman, Patrick Troughton. He saw this, got on Sidney Newman's side, got the rest of the production team to be on board with this, and then they ran with it. Taking his personality, seeing where it aligned with the Doctors, and turning an icon into a legend. Charm must have also convinced them not to reveal too much about the Doctor's backstory, considering in early drafts of The Power of the Daleks, they were gonna? Sidney Newman infamously had notes to do with stuff to do with the Doctor's backstory uh, for the initial pilot version of An Unearthly Child. However, it's less known about that The Power of the Daleks would have also done stuff like this. It would have explicitly stated that the Doctor had renewed himself prior, which would later be implied in the brain of Morbius and confirmed in the Timeless Children, but they would have said that in The Power of the Daleks. I don't know how to feel about that. They would have also stated the Doctor's age to be 750 years old, which may have been a bit too... I don't know, pu pushy on towards an audience. Like, they already have to come to terms with the fact that the Doctor is someone that can be not Bill Hartnell, they may also have to come to terms that he's significantly older than they may have thought. Yeah, I think that would have been too much for an audience to get all at once. However, they did push that back to the start of the next season in The Tomb of the Cybermen, where the Doctor revealed that he was a less extreme age of 450. Which is still ridiculously older than we would have previously imagined. But, honestly... They did it separately, and it felt natural, and it it was good. They would have also revealed that the Doctor's planet was kind of destroyed by the Daleks, which, yeah, Time War, that may have inspired the Time War, but here's, here's the thing. I've thought about this, and this does not make sense. See the Doctor's first meeting of the Daleks, it is after he left his home planet. So he's not... He, we didn't initially see the Doctor as a sort of refugee type, but also, there are not really any gaps for them to do this. Because, as of the massacre, the Doctor says that he could go back to his home planet, which implies, by then, it still exists. So the Daleks must have destroyed it between the massacre and the tenth planet. There are no gaps between those stories. Big Finish had to invent some. So I don't know how they would have explained it, but I'm glad they didn't even try to do that. This also would have conflicted with the idea that the Doctor was on the run from his own people, which was another idea that was floating around at this point. I would say Patrick Trout's casting saved the characterization of the Doctor, in all honesty. And he arguably kept the show going until a successor could be cast. Trown was a very talented actor and was very experienced in the field of television, which is something they were probably looking for, considering a TV set is not very new actor friendly. Especially for a show like Doctor Who. They got a new actor, the director would be too busy focusing on how everything worked on set and couldn't exactly hold an actor's hand. So they needed someone that could just navigate the set and do their job. Patrick Chatham was one of those, but what if he wasn't? Because <laughs> he wasn't the only experienced actor they could have gone for. He wasn't even the only consideration. So because he accepted the offer, he got the part, but what if he didn't? After all, according to his biography, he staunchly rejected the idea of being Doctor Who 2, as he called it, and only agreed to the part because he got financial security to send all of his children to private education. Say... What if he did have the financial security already, or just simply had less children? Would he have still agreed? Possibly not. If this was the case, who else could have been Doctor Who to? Infamously, Peter Cushing himself. He played Doctor Who in the Dalek Mania movies, and... He later regretted not accepting this offer. But what if he came to a sense of sooner? The obvious idea is that he would have played it exactly like he did in the movies, 
So back to the point about Hartnell impersonation, this may have not worked. We are forgetting, however, Peter Cushing was a phenomenal actor, so maybe he would have also taken a similar initiative to Patrick Troughton. After all, he was a ranged actor as well, so what if he did something different other than just a Bill Hartnell uh, cosplay? I do feel like playing a different version of Hartnell's character may have skewed his idea of what the character may have been, because he already has the experience of playing a character the certain way. So even if he did his own thing, which I'm sure he would have because of the possibly three seasons he could have done, maybe more, maybe less, he probably would have started with a Hartnell-y baseline and then added as he went along. As I said earlier, this would have changed the focus of what it meant to be the Doctor, but I don't think it would have been as derivative. But I still wouldn't be able to see the likes of David Tennant, Matt Smith, or Jodie Whittaker playing the part. Another infamous uh, casting decision was Brian Blessed. Yeah, that Brian Blessed. I am not familiar with a lot of his work. I mean, I'm familiar with him in some aspects, but definitely not his 60s work. I did a bit of research, saw him a little bit in Z Cars, and from what I can gather as, from him as a performer, from that very little, and admittedly very little, he would have actually possibly fit better as what the BBC was actually wanting. And no, I don't mean the Hartnell impersonation, I mean the other thing I mentioned earlier. The LSD chess master funny guy. Perhaps they secretly wish Brian Blessed didn't have any other commitments, because that, you know, it does feel like the sort of performance Brian Blessed would have given. And I think they only went with Pat Trouton because Brian Blessed said no. Of course, I do not know. That's just the impression I have been given from my research. But who knows? I mean, the people at the time would have known, but most of them are either dead or just really old. Who knows? Um, if you know exactly what happened, um, feel free to comment below. Again, I feel they needed something as subtle as Patrick Trout's performance, but perhaps Brian Blessed would have been. After all, his reputation of being a shouty man only happened later on. He'd be the oldest standing Doctor as of this video, because Brian Blessed is still alive. And the character of the Doctor would have been very different. But perhaps it would have been more inclusive of other actors, such as David, Matt, and Jodie. There doesn't seem to be a consistent through line between Hartnell and Blessed, or my hypothetical idea of what Blessed may have been like. But it wouldn't have felt out of place. But I will say that knowing of a through line of the character, in my opinion, was necessary for the long-term appeal of the character. Either way, Molly Doctor stories would hit a bit different. Mm -hmm. We could be playing the game of Rassilon at this very moment! Other actors considered for the part were Rupert Davies, Valentine D.L., and Sir Michael Hordern. All actors clearly selected for their experience. I don't think a single actor they were considering was in any way inexperienced. So they met the basic requirements. However, none of these three actually wanted to commit to a long-term role like Doctor Who. With Davies already starring in 52 episodes of BBC's Magret, considering Hordern was actually the pick if Troughton declined, it would have been interesting to see if he, or the others for that matter, would have been able to deliver a, let's say, enthusiastic performance. I think out of those three, DL has the most promise. Even if he's got a sternness, that would have made Hartnell blush. Perhaps I'm just typecasting considering the only thing I've actually seen DL in is Doctor Who as the Black Guardian. But I do still see him as someone that would have changed the character's direction in a way that wasn't Troutons. Perhaps all three would have had Trouton sensibilities and crafted a character. And perhaps the character would have had the same sensibilities as Trouton. Who's to say? In the end, I am glad they did a renewal in the first place, as... Let's be real, if Doc 2 ended with the Tenth Planet, that would be a bit shit, wouldn't it? I'm glad they did try to see if the show could survive without Hartnell. And I'm glad they actually picked Trouton, and I'm glad he agreed because he created such a special iteration of the character, one that produced a legacy for that character to have. His approach actually made everyone understand what the definition of the Doctor from Doctor Who was. He knew what was needed, he had a variety of options, he went with the best one, 
Perfect. <laughs> he utilized his awe-inspiring view of the character to take arguably one of the best characters in fiction to arguably the best character in fiction. This likely secured the long-term appeal of the show, maybe not the literal longevity of it, as I said, that was Pertwee, but I do believe that the character of the Doctor was certainly saved because of Troughton's influence. Patrick Troughton may have not saved Doctor Who the show, but he certainly did save Doctor Who the character. Thank you for watching, I do think this is an interesting debate, and I feel like a lot of this, yes it was researched, but I was projecting my own opinions on what may or may not have happened, and I was trying to be as unbiased as possible. I am a Second Doctor fan, I'm a big Second Doctor fan, not as much as Will, but like, I do really enjoy the character and Troughton's performance as the character. But I tried not to let that influence my dis like my thought process. I tried to look at the facts that we found out uh, through the biography, the facts I found out through research. I think the discussion of if Doctor Who was saved by Patrick Troughton really does depend on your definition of saved. We can continue this in the comments down below and I recommend you leave comments saying your opinion. I hope you're all enjoying Trout and Month so far as well. It's not over yet, so stay tuned as there is going to be great content for the remainder of this month. And I hope to see you next time. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. It will really help this channel a lot. Um, we may actually be approaching a thousand subscribers soon, so please help out if you haven't already. Make sure to ring the notification bell as well, and I wish you a happy Trout Month. Goodbye.